Okay, so this is the fourth video lecture on the topic of theory. I keep thinking I'm going to get more than one uh, theory done per video, and then I don't. Um, in this in this lecture, I want to talk about cognitive perspective. I just to if, just to acknowledge that for me, cognitive is like the most abstract. It's one kind of the one that's hard for me to get my mind around. Um, essentially, what cognitive argues or what cognitive theory, remember cognitive means thinking, uh, cognition is um, a thought, cognitive processes refers to mental processes. So what this theory focuses on is how our thinking and how our mental processes change over the life course or through the life course. The Probably the most famous cognitive thinker is this fella here, uh, Pinochet. He's the one that is credited with these different stages of cognitive development you may have heard of. Sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operational, and former operational. And basically what they all say, or what, yeah, basically what this model says is that, and I've tried to put it really bold here, I mean, the, the takeaway point from all the cognitive psychologists is that kids think differently, that they, they truly do not understand and are not capable of thinking the same way that an adult thinks. So when an adult is talking to a small child, we often get very frustrated, at least, yeah, we get very frustrated with children and we'll say, like, why don't you understand this? According to cognitive theories, because their brain is simply not capable of understanding, is not capable of thinking that way that we begin. And when we get to different chapters, I'll have, you know, I'll talk more specifically about what stages that these different stages are at but a child smaller than 18 months old does not understand that if you hide a toy under a blanket that that toy is still there this is what's called object permanence right so one of the reasons the peekaboo is such a fun game for children is because at a certain stage in their development they don't understand that if they can't see you you're not there and that can be very fun. So this is what we would call a sensory, that children are learning everything through their mouth, a little bit like Freud. Freud talked about the oral stage. But what Pinochet argues is that this stage is, this is how a child is learning. They learn through their mouth, which is kind of what Freud said too. But Freud said you were doing sexual pleasure. Then we go through the two to five, right? And that is, this is a stage where a child does not understand if you see things differently than them, so a really important term comes up in here is called theory of mind. And what theory of mind is, is my ability to understand that you think and see the world differently than myself. A child simply cannot take perspective, right? The world is only as they see the world. So to, to assume or to say like, uh, to accuse a child of not understanding, you know, that of doing things that, well, not, well yeah. so one of them you sometimes hear is that, well, that baby is crying just to piss me off. That is simply not cognitively possible from this theory because their brain doesn't understand that their behavior, actually, there is this the notion that a child doesn't even understand the sense of self. They don't even understand that they are separate from you. Uh, at the time of, you know, up until, I don't know, I forget what stage that is, but up until two years old, they don't even have a sense of self. And then we move to uh, concrete operational. And this is when things are absolutely like they're, they're black and white there. Um, I can remember getting my mother getting angry at me because I overheard her talking to my dad about they were going to lie to my grandpa about something. And I was very angry because in my world, everything that was a lie and there's no gray. There's no sort of in between. And then we move to sort of the, the a higher stage. Oops, sorry. A higher stage of learning here. And that's what we call formal operational. But the point is, is that we do not children do not think the same way adults do and it is by experiencing and growing that we can incorporate or assimilate as this word right here we assimilate new information and we have to rearrange our thinking so it was it is not fair or reasonable to assume a child understands 
what you understand because their brain is simply not able to do that. And this actually continues all the way up to middle adulthood. That by the time the brain develops, as you may have heard me say, from the back to the front, and the frontal part of the brain isn't even fully developed until we are 25 years old. So part from a cognitive development perspective, part of what growing up is about, it, we will be making, we'll make different mistakes over the course of our life because we're not capable of thinking about ideas in certain ways. Ooh, okay. Um, then we get to another cognitive psychologist here in disguise by the name of Gotsky. I actually kind of like his model. Um, I find his model useful from my perspective. Uh, sometimes this is called a socio-cultural model because Again, this is the, the emphasis for Vygotsky of development is thinking. And his model says that the way we learn um, to think is through interaction with other people. And I like that idea. That is very consistent with my sociological worldview, that the way we grow, the way we um, become fully a full human is through, right here it says, interaction with people. And it is only by being with people and interacting with people that we learn new things about our human existence. But specifically, Vygotsky um, emphasizes the role of language. And it is the, the essence of his argument is the way that we think is by through our language. Even in the quiet of the night, what's what's going on in our head is we're telling ourselves we're <laughs> even in our head we're hearing words right when we talk quote unquote talk to ourselves the voices in our head those voices are using language and therefore our ability to think abstractly or even concretely is limited by our ability to use language and the language, the words, the words that we have. The more words we have, the better we're able to communicate. One of the, from a cognitive model, one of the reasons that for the terrible twos, as they say, as opposed to the terrific twos, one of the reasons that two-year-olds get so frustrated is because they're trying to explain something and they don't have the words right? And I mean, if any of you have gone to therapy, one of the first things you do in therapy is you explain how you're feeling. And the therapist says, well, you are feeling, they give you a word for your feeling. And you go, ah, that's right. You go to the doctor. What do you get? You get a word for your illness. And we feel better because language is the limiting structure of our of our thinking, of our of our culture, of our worldview, right? So language is critical. Who wins the most arguments? The person that has the more words, who can explain how they feel in the more specific and the most with the most specificity. So in his in his model of how we learn, uh, Vygotsky called he he used a couple phrases here is what he called the zone of proximal development. And that's kind of what's intended to be illustrated, illustrated over here, right? So we all know something that would be down here. We all know something. And let's say we're trying to learn something new. Like I'm trying to teach you something new. That's what up here. That's what I want you. You, you maybe you don't know this right now, but you know this. So what I do as the other as the interaction right here, like the interaction with people, I'm the people you're interacting with is I focus on this zone right here. I focus on taking you from what you already know, the terms, the words, the concepts you already know, and explaining them by scaffolding, right? By, if you think about a scaffolding, that's the frame outside of a building, so you can get to the top and you can paint up here. By scaffold, by building on the ideas that you already have. If you think about teaching a child to read, you start with the letters. And then you start with letter combinations and then you move, you scaffold up that, right? You learn how to count before you learn how to add. You learn how to subtract before you learn how to divide. So the zone of proximal development, this is where growth happens, is right, is between what you need to know and what you already know. 
and I think there's a quiz question, I think there's a discussion about the zone of proximal development to think about something or to offer an example of what you, so an, an example I think I use in that exercise is I had a student who had worked in a factory, she was a, uh, my age, she was middle age, coming back to college student, and she had worked in a factory and she needed to learn how to use Canvas. She knew how to use like the email and so the gap was she needed to use Canvas and she knew how to use email. So I had to work within this zone of a proximal development. Okay, I'm going to stop here. When I come back, I'll talk about contextual things.